Hey, what's up, y'all? We're going to evaluate the integral of sine x divided by x from negative infinity to infinity. And it's going to be awesome because I'm going to show you this sweet trick on how to do it, the Feynman method or the Feynman way. And you can use that same trick to solve many complicated integrals. I have a number of examples you can check out, and we're going to use that to solve this one step by step. Now, to do this integral, first thing I'm going to do, it's kind of like another trick. Uh, recognizing that sine x divided by x is an even function, I'm going to change the limits of integration, and sometimes this helps. So rather than going from negative infinity to infinity, we're going to go from 0 to infinity, because the integral from negative infinity to 0 is the same as from 0 to infinity. So we're going to go from 0 to infinity and then double it here. So we're going to evaluate this integral right here. Now this is the trick. We're going to introduce this magic parameter. And I'll explain it as we go through, uh, but this seems like magic right now. So we're going to introduce a new function by introducing this parameter, t. We can call the parameter anything, but by convention it's called t. And we're going to introduce this factor, just kind of magically insert it inside the integrand e to the negative tx. And we'll see why we did this, but for now, kind of bear with me. Uh, when you have other integrals, we might not insert the same thing, e to the negative tx. You may be creative, it might be t squared or divided by t, or sometimes it might be trial and error to determine which is the right parameter to introduce. But for this integral, it's e to the negative tx, and I'll show you why. Now, what we want is g of zero, right? So when t is 0, then we have the integral that we want. So we want g of 0, because that's this integral right here. And if we know that, then we double it, and that's our integral, and that's our answer. Now, we don't know how to take the, the integral of this, but we do know how to take the derivative. And if we take the derivative of this with respect to t, this is what we got right here. We're going to take the partial derivative with respect to t, and there's this pretty sweet rule that allows us to just bring the derivative inside the integral sign. No problem most of the time. It's called the Leibniz integral rule. There are some conditions, and I derived this rule and went over those conditions. You can check that out if you want. We need to ensure it's continuous. There must be like this dominating function. Anyways, most of the time, we can bring it in. It, the conditions are generally mild to just kind of bring it in. Uh, so see that rule if you want to know kind of more about it. So this we can do. We can take the derivative of this e to the negative tx. That's our friend from Calc 1. So that's negative x e to the negative tx. And my friends, if you look at this, this is the whole reason we introduced the parameter. Like this x here, now that we took the derivative, this x cancels with this x in the denominator. Oh. So that we're left with this. We're left with an integral that we know how to integrate. This you may have done in Calc 2. This is like uh, an integration by parts uh, integral that we can do. I've gone through this integral a number of different ways. You can check that out if you want. This integral becomes negative 1 over 1 plus t squared. The negative is just the negative right from here. Now, my friends, we have this function, right? we've evaluated the derivative of g. So we have g prime of t equals negative 1 over 1 plus t squared. We don't want g prime of t. We want g of t because we want to get to g of 0. So we are going to take the integral of this. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus that allows us to do that. The integral of this, negative 1 over 1 plus t squared, that's our g of t that we're hoping for. And the goal or the reason we introduce this parameter t is so that after we take the derivative, right, right here, after we take the derivative, we can simplify this to an integral that we can solve with respect to x. And another one, another integral that we can solve or evaluate, I should say, another integral that we can evaluate with respect to t. So we've kind of turned this integral, the main integral that we're trying to do, into two hopefully easier integrals. Now, this one is easy if you recognize that it's a trig substitution from Calc 2. If not, then it may be challenging, but uh, this is a, a trig substitution. Uh, I have a link on how to do that. I've solved this as well. Uh, it's not too bad. It's actually a pretty sweet substitu substitution what it turns out to be. But if we do this using the trig substitution, it becomes arctan of t, and the negative is because of the negative right here. We're doing this integral so we're left with this annoying integration constant that we always have. So to find out what g of 0 is, 
which is what we want. We've got to find the integration constant, and then we can find 2 of g of 0 of what we want. And to find the integration constant using this, this is kind of all part of the trick, we often kind of look at the limits. So c g of t, g of t equals to negative arc tan of t plus c. But g of t also equals the integral with our parameter that we're trying to solve. So these two expressions have to be equal to each other because they're both g of t. So I equate the two expressions. And now we're going to look in the limits of, of t. And this is another kind of trick thing. So in the limit as t goes to infinity, what happens to this left-hand side? Well, if t goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So this whole left-hand side is going to go to zero. So in the limit as t goes to infinity, we have zero on the left. What about the right? Well, arc tan of t goes to pi over two in the limit as t goes to infinity. But if we want zero on the left, we gotta have zero on the right. So if we have negative pi over two here, that means to get to zero, c has to be pi over two. Hope that makes sense. Like, let me know if that's confusing, but I hope that's clear. So now that we know the integration constant, proudly, we have our g of t, it's the arc tan of t plus pi over t. We want g of zero. So g of zero is when t is zero, arc tan is zero is zero, so g of zero is pi over two. And my friends, our integral, two g zero is pi, and that's it, and it's all its glory, and we made it. So we hope you enjoyed it. There's lots of other integrals that I've done using that method, and many other integrals as well. So check those out. And good luck on your midterms, your final exams. Hang in there. Integrals are not easy to learn. They were very hard for me when I first learned it. But the more you do, the better you'll get. You can survive.